All right, so recently one of my favorite YouTube streamers did a playthrough of Super Mario 64, and I decided to play along. Of course, every time I finish that game, I'm always left wanting more. And when I was younger, I did have Super Mario 64 DS, which is awesome because it has a bunch of extra content. Unfortunately, when you try to play this game these days, it didn't hold up too well, primarily because of the controls. The controls were digital. There was no analog controls on the DS port of this game. Now, there was a way you could use the touch screen to uh, have analog-like controls, but it wasn't great, and I want to play it on an emulator anyways, so using the touch screen doesn't really make sense. So every, I don't know, couple years or so, I Google to see if somebody has fixed uh, a ROM hack or leaked source code or whatever for Super Mario 64 DS to see if I could play it with analog controls. And I found this article. Now this is a couple years old. This is two year, almost exactly two years old now. Um, and there are a couple other videos on YouTube, but I'm gonna make one both for myself because I'm gonna show you exactly how I configure it um, to get it running perfectly and also for you. Um, but you know, in, in my future self, I might want to revisit this video so that I will know how I like it set up. So this is both to capture my own custom setup just for future reference, because I know I'm gonna forget all this stuff. But then also, if you'd like to see the best way to play Super Mario 64 DS in 2023, this is how. So this article uh, basically explains that a custom fork of the DS or DESMU ME emulator was forked specifically to play uh, Super Mario 64 with analog controls. So if we follow the link to the GitHub is here, uh, you know, the instructions here say how to set up everything up. We'll go over that in a second, but for now, I'm just going to download the latest release. I'm just going to download this exe. Let's look at this in download folder. And then here I have my ROM of Super Mario 64. This is not patched. This is just my actual ROM. And then uh, we have a link to a hex editor. So I'm going to put this emulator I just downloaded into there. And then if we go back to the instructions, Okay, so it tells you about the analog stick and it says apply the game patch or the cheat code. And then it says to use the ROM patch, download the IPS file for your version on the patches page. So if we go here, it says first you have to figure out which version of the game you have. Now this step is kind of confusing, which is why I wanted to go over this both for myself and for anybody who's watching. Basically, there is a few different American releases, a few different Japanese releases, they have different revisions, etc. And the, in order for this to work, you need the modified emulator to accept analog input, but you also need the modified game to accept analog input. So we already downloaded the emulator, now we need to modify our game. So if you scroll down here and it says, okay, unknown version. Okay, so you can identify the revision of the game um, by looking for ASME. Um, and if it's revision zero, it'll have these extra letters at the back. Um, you can identify the version of a ROM file in hex editor. The byte at the address 01E is for revision zero and for revision one. So we can use this to figure out which um, version of the ROM we have. And it also says down here, unknown version. If you open in the hex editor, the bytes starting at zero C will be the identification code. So ASME means American. So let me show you how to do that. You can get this program called HXD. It's a free program. I use it all the time um, and I already have it installed. So let's open that up. All right. And then you can take your ROM file and drag and drop it into this window. Now you don't need to know how any of this stuff works. It's, you know, it's basically just nonsense binary data, but what we can do is we can look, okay, so here at zero C, we have these four bytes and it's ASME. So this is the North American version of the game. And if you recall, it said, uh, let's see, one E is where the revision is and zero is for revision zero and one is for revision one. So let's see which revision I have. So if we go to one E, I have zero one there. So I have North America revision one is my version of the ROM. So you would just do the same thing. You would look for your revision code in the ROM and then you would look for or your uh, version code in the ROM and your revision number here. You can close this now. 
So I know which version I have. I have American Release Revision 1. So I'll go here and then it says get this IPS patch. So I'll download that. Let's go grab that and move it into our folder. Now, as you can see, it recognizes that there's a heart there because I already have the program installed, but there's another program you're going to need and you can get that from romhacking.net. This is called Lunar IPS. And basically, Nintendo doesn't want you to redistribute their ROMs, right? That's something that they're um, very anti. However, lots of people like to distribute ROM hacks. And so this is a tool which allows you to apply a ROM hack to a ROM that you already have. So this way people can distribute their ROM hacks and Nintendo can't do anything about it because the user has to supply their own ROM. So that's what this utility does. Uh, so if you just download this, all right. Let's put that in here and then I'll extract it. Now I already virus scanned this, but you always want to make sure when you're downloading random EXEs from the internet that you give it a virus scan. And so now we're ready to patch the ROM. So here's how this works. We run Lunar IPS. We say apply IPS patch. We then go and we get the IPS file that we downloaded from the GitHub. It then asks you for the ROM that you want to patch. And I'm going to choose all files because it doesn't see it for some reason. And we're going to choose the ROM that we just opened up in the hex editor previously. Then we'll say file was successfully patched. All right. And so now this ROM is ready to go. So the next thing that we just have to do is actually open up the emulator and start configuring it. Now this might give you like a warning because it's like a program that's not downloaded often. Again, I already virus scanned, but you should do your due diligence and virus scan everything. Uh, so I'm going to hit run anyways. All right, we can minimize this console. And so here's the emulator window. So the first thing is I'm going to open up the ROM. There it is. But I'm going to pause it real quick and then let's set up our settings. So I'm going to maximize the screen. And the way that I like to have the LCDs laid out is horizontally. And then I like to set the ratio. Um, where is it? Window size. There it is. Window size ratio like this. So the bottom screen is small and this screen is big. So for now, let's set up the controller. So I'm going to go to two things. The first thing you need to go to is the uh, GBA slot. And when you click that, you can choose a cartridge that would be in the GBA slot and you can choose analog stick. So the way that this programmer figured out how to get analog controls into the DS is by basically making a special GBA slot cartridge that the DS ROM can read values from. And then this emulator allows you to supply your joystick values. Now I'm using a Tribute 64. I'll talk more about controllers later, but I'm just going to hit left and then up make sure that it sees my analog stick correctly. And you can also adjust your dead zone. I know if you're, um, you know, very good at Super Mario 64, you'll be sensitive to the dead zone of the joystick. So you can configure that here. Then otherwise you configure the controls like you would for a regular emulator. Now it's a little bit confusing. So I made this um, spreadsheet in Google Sheets. So um, I'm just actually going to um, leave this up while we configure the controls because it is confusing. Okay, so the up, left, down, right is for the DS. So up, we're not going to use for anything. Left is what I'm going to push C left as. Down, we're not going to use for anything. And right, I'm going to push C right. Then these are reversed. So on N64, A is jump. On NDS, it's B. And then B is attack on N64 and on Nintendo DS, it's A. So these have to be reversed. So for this one, I'm going to push my A button. And for this one, I'm going to push my B button. Then Y is not really used. So I'm just going to put, I don't know, I'll put C down for that because it doesn't matter. Then X is what's used for cam in and out. And since we since the DS doesn't have a distinction between camera zoom in and camera zoom out, I'm just going to make that C up. Start will just be start. 
I have an extra button on this controller, that'll be select. So then left and right, um, the DS only have one left and right button and it looks like they would normally be, right would be for crouch. Now I want that to be my left button because that's what it would feel like on an N64 because on the N64 Z is crouch. So I'm gonna push my left trigger there. And then focus camera is what normally would be the right trigger on N64. So I'm gonna push my right trigger there. So I know that's really confusing, but I believe I got the controls set up correctly there. Uh, but if not, look at this graphic and try to um, figure out how you want to map your controls. But with all that said, that should be good. I'm gonna resume the ROM now. Now, if we go to 3D settings, uh, what I found is I wanna use OpenGL 3.2. Uh, I want to turn on the GPU scaling factor to three. Now, if you have a more powerful computer, you can go higher. But what this is is basically, if this is at one, it will render the game at the resolution of the Nintendo DS. If this is at two, it'll render at double resolution. If this is at three, three times, and so on. Um, I found that three looks good enough for the simulator, so that's where I left it at. Um, then we go to 24-bit color. It looks nicer that way. Uh, Deposturize textures is something we want on. For anti-aliasing, I like to do four, and I turn on smooth textures, and that should be the graphic settings. So let's touch the start. Oh, display method. Here it is. Open GL. And that will um, make the background. Mario. And we're running slow right now. Alright, and there we go. So now we're in the game. And. I'm actually using an analog controller. So if I push just very gently, you can see Yoshi will just creep along a little bit faster. He'll go faster. And if I give it full tilt, he'll run. So you no longer have to use a sprint button. You no longer have to use analog screen controls. You can just use an actual analog controller. And because I got my C buttons mapped right, I can rotate the camera like you would in regular Mario 64. See up toggles between the different zoom levels. Unfortunately, like I said, there's no Z down. Uh, my left, uh, where is it? Okay, so I, I screwed that control up. I have to go fix that one. So jump works right, back works right. That, that all looks good. Start works. So I think, okay, so the only thing that's messed up is my right trigger should be on my left side. I, I, okay, so if we go to, um, okay, so I want, I think these two have to be switched. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so now the left trigger, kind of where your Z button would be, is crouch, and then that's focus the camera. So this is what, if you have a Tribute 64, this is what the controls should look like to make it as close to Mario 64 as possible. Um, in terms of frame rate, for some reason at the title screen, I was not getting good frame rate, but once I'm in the game, I'm pretty close to 60 at all times. So I feel like that's good enough. So if we also go back to these uh, emulation settings, you can kind of see, I mean, sorry, the uh, 3D settings you can kind of see what some of the stuff in the background does. So for example, if I turn off deposterize or deposterize textures, you can see they become a lot more sharp like that. Um, we can also turn off anti-aliasing and smooth textures. And you'll see the textures have giant blocky pixels. The game is not anti-aliasing or anti-aliased. Um, and those do different things, right? For this, we'll just do the anti-aliasing, but then also you want to smooth textures on top of that and it looks really good. Um, and then I haven't used any of these, so I don't know if they need to be used. I do do this. Oh, I also make the textures uh, 4X as well. So now the textures will also be scaled up. So when, the, when they're smooth, it will look a lot better. So this is pretty much how I like to run it. Now you can also see if we do GPU scaling factor one, 
This is essentially running at the same resolution as the Nintendo DS. It still has all the texture filtering and stuff, but it's just running at the resolution of a DS. So this would be double resolution. And I find for 1080p, like you don't really need to go past three, but uh, it, maybe if you're running on 4K and if you have like a powerful computer, I mean, you could go up to eight size. Of course, at this point, you're gonna start seeing awful frame rate. <laughs> so I, I don't recommend going too high on that because that really chews through your GPU. So I like to keep it at three and it just overall looks really good. So that is how you set it up. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about um, is uh, <laughs> controllers. So during my uh, recent revisit to Super Mario 64 and then Super Mario 64 DS, um, my Nintendo 64 controller broke. Now, back in the day, if you were a certain age, uh, you might rec uh, recognize this website. In the early days of the internet, kind of late 90s, early 2000s, Licksang was amazing. This was a Japanese import website. This was like before the days of Amazon, before the days of, you know, just eBay and, and everything. Well, I guess eBay probably existed, but um, you could get all kinds of super rare video game stuff bought online. And I remember uh, I begged my parents for the longest time to get this adapter from Licksang. And this allowed you to do a PS2 or on the side an N64 controller plugged into USB. And it blew my mind that I could use my real life N64 controller from my childhood on my Windows XP computer <laughs> and use that to play emulators. And I have been using this adapter and my real life N64 controller for about 20 years. Um, but unfortunately, that controller uh, broke. You know, those, those controllers have problems with the analog sticks and you have to replace them and everything. So it finally kicked the bucket and I decided to uh, look into what new types of controllers I could find. Uh, the first thing that I got was this Retro Fighters Brawler 64 USB edition. I do not recommend this controller. Uh, this controller um, did not work on Windows 10. It did work on my Mac. However, my Mac is my work computer and I don't play games on my work computer. So I would not recommend getting this. Uh, this I think only works on Windows Vista. Even here, interestingly enough, it says platform Windows Vista. <laughs> So I think they know that it doesn't work on Windows 10, which is really weird because it's just a USB controller. Like, how do you screw that up? But for whatever reason, it didn't work. So I contacted their support. They sent me this controller, which is their modern version. This is Bluetooth. It has rumble built in. This controller feels amazing. And a lot of people really like this controller. When I see people talking about their N64 collections on the internet, very often this is the controller that's in their hands. I especially like how it has like the original um, N64 kind of clear colors as well as the gray. Um, and I ended up actually getting the teal version. And so I do recommend this company. I bought this controller from them, didn't work on Windows 10. They sent me this one free of charge and it is a really good controller. This is the closest thing to a modern controller that you could possibly hold in your hands that works with N64. Um, so I do like this controller. That said, um, while I was waiting for my RMA ticket, I also got this controller. Now this is probably my favorite controller. Even though I really do like this controller, this is my favorite controller. The reason why is because it feels nostalgic. So specifically, the shape of the grips feel like you're actually holding an N64 controller. And instead of having the Z button underneath your left hand, you can just use the left. There's two triggers on the top. You can see like here. So you have Z left and you have Z right. So you can just use that as the Z button. But if you aren't looking at your hands and you're just feeling the controller while you play the game, it basically feels identical to using a real N64 controller. Just the way the grips fit in your hand, the placement of the buttons, it, it could fool your brain into thinking that you just actually have an N64 controller in your hands. And yes, the, the left stick isn't straight down like it would be on a real N64 controller. This is closer to the Hori pad. 
but let's face it, the Hori pad is basically what the N64 controller should have been, so this is really close. Now, one thing that I see a criticism of this controller is that people say that it's um, uh, small. It's an optical illusion. This controller is plenty big. I have pr probably like uh, medium to large size hands. I definitely don't have small hands, and this controller just fits fine in my hands. I don't have any problem with it being small. It looks small, and a lot of people think that it looks small, but it's really not. It's only like a half centimeter uh, shorter, or like width-wise, than this controller is. And it's like basically the same size as an Xbox controller. I think the reason why people think it looks small is because it's taller than a normal controller. This controller is really tall. And people just assume that, well, it's more square-shaped, so it's probably smaller overall. No, this is as wide as a regular controller, but also just way taller than a regular controller. So I have no problem holding this in my hands. Um, the other things that I like about it is that these buttons, the plastic on them, feel exactly like an N64 controller, both in like the terms of the texture, like it's a, a sort of shiny, hard plastic, but also in terms of the actual button press, the rubber membrane that's inside the controller squishes exactly like a real N64 controller. It's not mushy, but it's also not like a mechanical switch. It's, you know, it's perfect. It feels like you're playing on original hardware. So I really like the C buttons, the A and the B button. They feel perfect. The triggers feel fine. Um, and the fact that I have um, uh, a left trigger instead of a Z button, that's also fine. Um, and then the analog stick also feels really good. It, it is, it does, it is gated. You can feel the four corners. Um, it's not exactly the same profile as a real N64 controller, so, you know, it'll go out of bounds a little bit compared to what a real one would do, but that's, again, I haven't had any problems with it at all. As someone who plays Mario 64 a lot growing up, like, I can play the game and it feels exactly like I remember it. I did not notice anything weird about the analog input. I can crouch, I can crawl, I can tiptoe, I can, you know, walk at a reasonable speed, I can run fast. The analog range has been perfectly fine for this, so I had absolutely no problem. So overall, um, I really like this controller because this basically recreates the closest thing to playing with a real N64 controller, except it's better than a real N64 controller because you only have the two handles. Um, you know, you have a more modern stick and more modern, uh, you have a more modern stick and more modern D-pad arrangement it just feels really good in the hands it feels like you're playing on an n64 controller don't get me wrong this controller is also amazing the benefit of this controller is that it has rumble it also feels good but the buttons do not feel the same they are flat and they're when you push them in i wouldn't say that they're more mushy but the clickiness is less like they just have less of a springy response to them they I, they don't feel mushy they certainly feel fine. This is a very good quality controller, so I can understand why people really like it. The buttons feel fine, but they don't feel original. They're not the same kind of springy profile as the Tribute 64 or as a real controller. And the buttons are also more flat, like they're just kind of less curved, less rounded, so they don't feel like the C buttons or the A and B buttons in your hand. Still a really good controller, but it's not... It's not true to the retro feeling, which for me is important, but not everyone cares about that. The other thing about this one is this one uses Bluetooth, whereas this one comes with a dongle. That's another decision that's up to you. I prefer the dongle because with my computer, I don't know, I just feel like Bluetooth is kind of annoying. Like I have to go into control panels. I have to do a pairing thing. I have to like, sometimes it forgets or if I get too far away, it'll disconnect. I have to reconnect it. I've never been a huge fan of Bluetooth stuff. It does work a little bit better with like, you know, your phone or your iPad or whatever for Bluetooth type stuff. But for my desktop PC, eh, I could live without Bluetooth. But for this one, it comes with a dongle that's already paired to the controller. So you just plug it in, it immediately finds it, and you're just good to go. You don't have to configure anything. You don't have to go to Bluetooth settings. I prefer this style because it's just one less headache. I just plug it in and it goes. And it also has the benefit of being wireless. It also works with a real N64 being wireless, which is really cool. Um, so I prefer this, this overall system, but I'm glad to have both, and I do play with both regularly, but this is my favorite. So um, when I configured the controls for this, 
Uh, I used it based on the Tribute 64, which is what I'm playing with right now. So overall, this is the best way to play Super Mario 64. And we can turn off the um, FPS. This is overall the best way to play um, Super Mario 64. And what happened to my controls? Well, there we go. Um, this is the best way to play Super Mario 64 in 2023. Like, it's it's amazing that I can finally play this game and it feels like I'm playing the N64 version. It just feels really good. So, uh, hopefully this video was interesting. I'm going to go play this game now.